Hari Om. Welcome to our next Bhagavad Gita video lesson. Let's start by seeing we're physically relaxed. Have a scan of the body. A slow, deep inhalation. Pause for a moment and absorb the prana. And slowly empty the lungs. This is episode 34, entitled, The Price for Forgetting. We're on the 11th verse, the second chapter. It's a little bit of a hard one to take in now when there's a lot of so much suffering going in the world. Let's try to absorb this with a, an open mind and heart. Sri Krishna says to Arjuna, you are grieving for those who should not be grieved for, that you talk as if you possess wisdom. The truly wise grieve for neither the living nor the dead. In the first chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, you could say Arjuna was educating Krishna about what right action is. And here's Krishna's response to Arjuna's rationalizing intelligence, trying to educate the higher self. Arjuna has spoken as if he was a wise person. Talking as if we're a sage is not that hard. We probably all do that. Walking that talk is another matter. And ultimately that walking has to turn into being that talk. So Krishna's pointing out in here the inconsistency of Arjuna's thought, his words, and his behavior. And as I said last week, uh, the philosophy of the Gita starts here, and he starts off with his main message, which is that those who have true understanding do not grieve about anything. Is that, is that the goal we're striving to achieve? Is that even desirable? A rock doesn't grieve. Am I supposed to be like an inanimate object with all this suffering going around in the world? It's an important question, but I want to hold off on that for now. For the moment, let's accept what Krishna says here, that the truly wise don't grieve for anyone either living or dead. You can say that she or he has come to the end of sorrow. And I particularly like this verse because if you read the Sanskrit, Krishna uses my name, Ashoka, which means without sorrow, without anxiety, without grief, without suffering. Truly wise means that we've made a connection with the eternal part of our being, the part that remains stable no matter what's going on in this world or even within our own mind, which is in constant flux. Because we seem to have lost contact with that eternal part and we're only in touch with the part that's in constant motion, our minds are unstable, our emotions are turbulent. We often don't feel very good. And then shoka, without the A, grief or sorrow, anxiety, is the inevitable price we pay for this forgetfulness. The homework assignment for this week could be, do you believe that there's a part of you that is unshakable despite whatever's going on around you and even what's happening within your own mind? And if you do believe that, what are you doing to nurture that connection? Thanks for joining. See you soon. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti.